These three walls may not look like much, but we're actually at the intersection of art and technology. I'm Victoria Laubman at the UIC's Electronic Visualization Lab, and we'll watch this. What you're seeing is part of a three-dimensional virtual reality environment called the cave. The Electronic Visualization Lab, or EVL, at University of Illinois at Chicago brings computer art students and engineering students together to create works of interactive art. Well, welcome to the cave. Uh, these glasses allow you to see in stereo. So when we put these on, we'll be able to see in stereo, like a stereo movie. But since it's virtual reality, we also are in control. We can move and see new worlds, like over oh, here. Oh, now you're in a waterfall. Oh. What's that? <laughs> Stick your one that the is waterfall. wild. Look at I'm going into a queue. I feel like I'm in, I'm in Twilight Zone. Probably the most interesting thing about virtual reality is the fact that you're seeing your viewpoint on the world and not somebody else's. It's the first redefinition of perspective since the Renaissance. Since its development in 1992, the cave has been used both as an artistic medium and as a tool for scientists and engineers. Well, scientists use it to visualize their data, to gain insight from numbers. They have supercomputers and instruments that generate huge piles of numbers, and by visualizing those numbers, they're able to understand the phenomenon they want to understand. When the EVL was founded in 1974, artists and engineers combined their talents to create computer-based video art. Now, EVL students and faculty work on the 3D interactive canvas of the cave. Professor Franz Fischnaller took me on a tour of his multi-mega book. We flip through the pages and find ourselves in Renaissance Florence. Walking through this uh, virtual environment, uh, as some people don't know exactly where to go, so I build in some avatars, little, uh, little humanoid figures, which are bringing us and carrying us to the most interesting part of the city. But we can walk straight through, walking, following him, and so I have made uh, the full interpretation of the innovation of this renaissance, and we're going walking straight now to see what Leonardo da Vinci has. Uh, wait, wait, what's happening over there? I can get into the church here in Milano, for example. And we go inside where Leonardo da Vinci has painted it last supper. And this I show you what happened there. This is giving complete goosebumps. This is so, so Now we are amazing. in Milan and we are in front of the last supper. In the real last supper you can walk on until here. But in virtual reality you can walk inside the painting. So you see the apostles in 3D <laughs> from the painting outside to the visitor's place. The, what I enjoy most is the complexity of the whole thing. That it gives me different possibilities to see things different. I have walked through this thousands of times. But each time I find a different surprise. Professor Drew Browning took me on a tour of his work, Home. We created a, a house that, that becomes the front end or the interface so that people can experience these various artworks through the house. The house has a metaphor to the psyche. The room is kind of disintegrating around us. Objects are flying around and we can navigate through them. Yeah, it's very Wizard of Oz-like. Oh wait, excuse me. Uh -oh. I have to answer the phone. Yes. Digital disruptor, our Oh, it's a telemarketer. Creates an invisible sensor okay. your home. Since you're literally at the forefront with all of these different media, and you see the students who are starting today who are sort of jumping in, a lot of these new students probably don't even come from painting backgrounds or drawing backgrounds. A lot of them are going right into electronic arts, and they are the ones who are helping define the vocabulary of this new medium and are going to be pushing the boundaries and pushing it to, yet to the, to the next level. Grad student Todd Margolis showed me some of this new vocabulary with his program which allows the viewer to draw in 3D. So you can make sort of any types of drawings that you want and sort of look around them, rotate around them and actually walk inside of them also. But you could draw anywhere, that's why it's called Infinite Studios, you oh. can make things as big or as small as you oh. want. Can I just cover the whole space? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and then you could walk inside of it. You could actually use this as a sort of message board. So yeah. right here I could sort of write WTTW <laughs> and write it in 3D. <laughs> well, that just got you an extra 30 seconds. <laughs> Many people use computers in the service of other media, which is perfectly fine. They use computers to make better photographs or to make video, to make television. But I've always been interested in doing things with computers that you can't do in any other medium. For instance, this rich interactive experience. 
can't be done in any other medium.